One, two, one, two. Hello everybody, my name is Adrian and welcome to your first timers or beginner reformer session. So I'm going to be using the addition of a Pilates circle for this workout. I have my football on the highest setting. I'm on two reds and a blue spring. If you want to use the lighter spring, please go ahead. Or if you prefer to challenge yourself, go even heavier, three reds and a blue, or all the springs if you prefer. So you're going to sit on the edge of your bed, and we're going to roll to our side. Hand goes onto the shoulder block, and roll onto your back. Feet flip up onto the foot bar. I'm going to put my headrest down for the first section, because I'd like to do a shoulder bridge. So you're going to bring your heels about hip width apart. So you're on the nice bit of your heel, good for pressing on, bring the arms to the sides of the body, checking in with a nice neutral position, softening through that rib cage, eye gaze to the sky, breathe in. As you exhale, flatten the lower back towards the floor and start to peel your spine up without clenching your buttocks, send your thigh bones forwards towards the toes, and then slowly articulate down bone by bone like the links of a bicycle chain coming out of neutral. Inhale, exhale, pubic bone to navel, start to peel up, creating ski slopes from knee to armpit. Stay here for a moment, keep the carriage still, in breath, and exhale, coming down through the throat, through the middle of your back, all the way down, nice and safely. Can we go again, in breath, exhale, curl up through the spine, bone by bone, using those hamstrings, glutes, pressing down onto the foot bar, those knees are pressing forwards to the center of your foot, in breath, and then exhale, slowly bring yourself down, vertebra by vertebra by vertebra, excellent. Right, so I'm gonna pop my headrest up a little for my body, this is a personal preference. So you know, nice heel to press from, and we're gonna push out and hold for a moment. So check in with your neutral, ensure that you're not tucking that tailbone underneath you, rib to hip connection is present. So as if you were standing on the floor right now, we're going to bend the knees in and push away, ensuring that you straighten both knees at the same time. Exhale, press, inhale, return. So my hypermobiles out there, remember you're moving to a true straight leg, not a snapped out locked leg. Strong legs on the return using the backs of your thighs not riding the springs. If you are happy with rib-tip, hip-tip connection, hands down to your sides. If you've got rounded shoulders, why not try it with the palms turned upwards? Great option there, just keep it going. Nice, smooth and seamless, so we don't want to hit the bumper. 10 more seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, do one more repetition, hold. Coming down to the ball of the foot. You're gonna raise the heels an inch and bend the knees and push away. So we want to avoid collapsing those heels underneath the foot bar right now. Keeping the pelvis level. Keep that seamless movement, warming up the ankles, knees and hips. Think about a squat but laying on your back. Isn't that excellent how we can use the reformer in this way? I love it. Keep it going. So keep the heels at that same height. So instead of a six inch heel, think about a kitten heel as you're lifting, yeah? Checking in soft through the ribs. Keep that head down, not looking at the screen right now. Hopefully you can hear my voice. Push away and hold, bring the heels together, keep the toes on the foot bar. So nice inward connection of the heels and pressing out, coming back in. The inner thighs connect to the top, you zip up. Exhale, inhale, return. We want to make sure that those knees are in line with the shoulder blocks as we do this. Not tucking the tailbone underneath you. And connecting and wrapping the thighs as we come up. Beautiful. Let's do 10 more seconds here. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and hold. Now take the heels to the widest section on your foot bar. You may need to look up to check, are you even nice active through those legs 
and then start to bend the knees down and push away. Exhale, inhale, return. Stay nice and active in those feet. We're now gonna come down to the halfway mark and do small pulses up an inch, down an inch. Finding a little burn there in the thighs. Maybe keep your smile. Are you still with me? Four, three, two, and push away. Coming back to the center of your foot bar on the ball of your feet. Calf raises, we're gonna lower both heels under the foot bar and rise up. Making sure we're not collapsing under that foot bar. Lower with control and rise with control. We want a length through the spine, sorry, itchy nose. Exhale as you lift. Really working the strength in your ankles, stretching out through the calves and Achilles tendons. We're gonna go straight into foot pedal. So as one heel lowers, the other knee lifts and you switch. The heels meet at the highest point. Otherwise you find yourself down here that I often see participants do that. So you wanna have nice long legs as you go here. Watch out points, you keep that pelvis nice and still as we move, even though we love a bit of Strictly. You need to be active through both feet, not just the foot that's going underneath that foot bar, guys. Just remember that, because a lot of the time we focus on just that heel going under, which is so last season. So be active through the top foot as well. Gorgeous, stay here and hold. If you want more, grab a hold of the rails and press down a little more. You'll feel that a lot more. And switch and change. Oh, that felt good. Give it a good stretch there. And then slowly bring yourself in. So we're gonna place the feet back, inner thighs connected on the foot bar, spine twist. Two versions. Hands are gonna be on the carriage and the rails or you can hold the posts. Now you're gonna bring the elbows down if you can. If you have any shoulder injuries, I suggest hold down here instead, okay? So let's bring the right leg to table, organize your pelvis, soft ribs, and then the left leg lifts up to table. So when you're ready, we're gonna to move towards the screen, in breath, and then exhale, come back through center, and then over away from the screen. So the watch out point here is that the shoulder, the opposite shoulder does not lift off your carriage as you do that. So I'm gonna try a few down here as well. And that is a nice way of grounding those scapula onto the carriage. So we inhale away and let the obliques bring you back through center. So we're working on spine mobility here. We're working on obliques. Exhale, return back to the center. A great way to warm up the spine. If your back is sore, maybe you need to keep your feet on the foot bar and just move from side to side. So that's a nice option there. But if you can, stick with me. Coming back through center. And then bring the right foot down, the left foot down. Great. Now I'm gonna grab my circle, so I've kept it nearby. And I'm gonna step into the circle. So I'm gonna have the circle mid-thigh area adjusted for comfort and I'm gonna lower my headrest down, prepare for shoulder bridge or glute bridge. So I've got my heels slightly wider than hip distance to keep the tension on the circle, and my hands are to the sides of my body on the carriage. I will inhale, prepare to move. As I exhale, I tuck my navel to the spine, flatten my lower back towards the carriage and start to peel myself up into shoulder bridge. Find the top of your bridge in breath, and then exhale, start to peel your spine down bone by bone. We want an awareness in the outer thigh, so we're gonna press into the circle as we lift, and you'll start to feel the outer thighs engage into the hips, into the glutes and the hamstrings. Inhale, and then exhale. Make sure that your head rest is flat. Neck safety is important. Let's go again, so pubic bone to navel. Think about the bones in your back as you do this. The spine is a slinky, and we are rolling down through that spine trying to Get rid of all that tension and try not to bypass those tight sections in your spine as you do this. 
We're going to stay at the top this time and hold it. Pause. We're going to press out in a circle. Five, four, three, two, one. Roll down through your spine and do the same thing on the floor. And five, or the mat, should I say, four, or carriage. There's many names for it. <laughs> and then roll yourself back up. I've even heard it being called the cart. Five, four, but for me, carriage is quite fabulous. <laughs> and let's roll ourselves down. And give me five, four, three, two, and one. Wonderful. So we step out of the circle and we transition to the inner thighs. So adjust the circle for your body today. Make sure it's in a comfortable position on the inner thighs, resting the head down. We're going to start down on the headrest here. We're not going to raise up yet, so we're going to inhale. As you exhale, press into the circle and then gently bring it back to its original shape. So I'm creating an oval shape. I'm not going for the death grip. Really important to clarify that. We're engaging the inner thigh muscles, but also think about your pelvic floor. So as we exhale, we draw the pelvic floor muscles up and in as well. So it's all connected, adductor into pelvic floor. Nice connection there, that's what we want. Adjust the circle if it doesn't feel right. Don't make sure the circle doesn't go flying and hit your teacher. <laughs> it's not happened yet. Is there wood? Touch. Find the wood. <laughs> right, now, if you are happy there, stay there. If you want to join me, we're going to lift up. So this time it's done in a table position. Find your neutral position in breath. As you exhale, squeeze the circle and release. Go again, squeeze. Get those thigh bones to squeeze in and then release. So you create a gentle oval inner thighs connected into pelvic floor. Abdominals are working. This is your last one. And then release. Bring your feet down one at a time. Lose that nasty circle and just give me a little inner thigh stretch there. Maybe rock from side to side. So we're going to do our first spring change and sitting up. So you're going to roll to your side, let your feet swing over the edge and sit down. I'm going to change to red, blue or red, blue and yellow or white, depending on your upper body strength. We're going to be doing resisted curl-ups and upper body movements. So I've got these handles on my um, straps, which are brilliant. I mean, you can normally get the straps, the long strap and the short strap. So I've got actual handles to hold, which are another great option. So bring yourself down safely. Just check that your ropes are not twisted. And I'm going to grab a hold of my handles instead. So I'm going to put my hands through there, actually. That's a great. And I'm going to find a position. The shoulders are pretty snug against the um, shoulder blocks right now. But I'm just going to make sure they're not shrugging my shoulders up. The neck is long. Bring the right leg to table. So load the carriage. Make sure it's loaded. Plug your shoulders back into your sockets and lift the second leg to table in breath. As you exhale, we're going to press down. And inhale, bring it back up. Let's go again. Exhale, press. And inhale, release. Avoid taking the wrists too far back, keeping the spine neutral. Keep the knees at 90. Think of reaching over the rainbow. Resisted curl up. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, rise up. Eye gaze to the knees and then slowly come on down. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, lift up, ripped hip and coming down. Next one, single leg stretch. So my leg is moving to where the ceiling meets the wall, really. The lower down you go, the harder the exercise is. But I'm going to stay stick in a position that's comfortable for you. You do not have to do any of this. So anyone with osteoarthritis, any osteo issues in your spine, you may want to take out the flexion and just do the arms, okay? We're going to do one more here. And then bring the right foot down, bring the left foot down and pause for a moment, take a little break. Great, so we're going to reset, so load the carriage. Bring the right leg to table and then the left leg to table, hold it there. So I'm going to bring the arms down first, the legs second, open, close, bring the knees in and the arms come back up. Little coordination and press away. Legs open, close, knees, arms. 
Now, can you do it together? Open and close. In and then separate. So everything together. So I'm starting with a non-flexion version and the flexed version is to the hundreds prep and then you bring yourself back down. It's a strong exhalation. Open, close, knees, arms. And again, open, close, knees, arms. Feel the lats working under the armpits. We want that, did I do that wrong? Yes, I did. <laughs> this is why it's called coordination. <laughs> open, close, in and release. Can we go again? Press, open, close, knees, arms come in. Whew. Brilliant, okay. So I'm just gonna let those straps fall on the floor and I'm gonna roll myself up and I'm gonna sit up. Are you feeling warmer yet? Great, so we're gonna stand up, we're gonna change to a single blue spring. Grab a drink of water, adjust your clothing and stand with me. How are we feeling team? So we're gonna go into hip flexor stretch now. So I'm gonna put my right foot, I'm gonna move any sort of trip hazard out of my way. I'm gonna have my right foot. For me, on, on the Pilates Allegro, we've got the black bobble. So you're gonna place your foot near that black bobble. So my shin is behind that. And I'm gonna put my hands on the foot bone. I'm gonna have my left knee on the carriage. Knee pain, I recommend you place a pad underneath your knee. You could fold a mat up. That's a great option here as well. So straight away, I've come up into the high position here. Making sure rib to hip is present. I'm not twisted, so square off to your front. We're going to breathe in. As you exhale, you're gonna slide your knee away and then bring yourself back in. Now, the Instagram special is normally a... Okay, we don't wanna get that. So I want less is more here. So engage your left gluteal and exhale, press away. Inhale, return. So it's actually a tiny movement, right? So I'm not actually jacking from my lower back. I'm not changing the position of my spine. Yes, my right leg stays where it is here. And I'm now going to add a lift with my left arm up. And then I bring it in. So I'm going to exhale on that. So what we want to avoid, let me just show you, is you see what I'm doing there? and I'm really hinging into my back. We want to avoid that. You want to just give me a very small movement here, but keep the engagement as best you can of the gluteal that is on top of the carriage right now. And you should be feeling the stretch in your hip flexor, right? Keep it going. Thumb pointing to the sky, ribs in, smile. Hello, nice to meet you. We're gonna do one more and then bring that in. Now keeping the knee in, just glide the leg back into hamstring stretch. So I'm gonna keep my spine long here and I'm just gonna hold that position. So I want to avoid any flexion through the spine. Lift your tail feathers, roll onto your heel to feel that stretch in your hamstring. Hold it for four, three, two, and one, and drag the carriage in. Great, so we're gonna kneel on top of the carriage now and we're gonna do what I call a wheelbarrow. So this is like a plank, um, or some people call this pendulum. I've heard it being called that as well. So you're going to have your hands about shoulder distance apart and you're going to get your shoulders over your wrists. So imagine you're looking down into the stream of water below you. You're going to make sure that that pelvis is in a neutral position so you're not arching or tucking your tail. Keep the ribs in and you're going to gently slide the knees away. From there, we're going to press away with the arms. We're going to in-breath and then exhale, come on in. So the movement comes from the shoulder joint. So it's not like your classic knee stretch. So if you notice, my body stays in that same alignment the whole time. Back of my neck is nice and long, and I'm pressing through the heel of my hand. My fingers are pointing down to the skirting board. Exhale. So I'm working through serratus muscles as well, my lats a little, as well as core. So glutes are engaged, you've got 5P between the butt cheeks, don't drop it out. Keep it going. To make this a little more intense, you're going to hold it out there for about 3 seconds, in breath, and then exhale, slowly bring yourself in. Inhale away. So yes, I'm on a blue spring, it is slightly supported, but hey, this is the beginning of your workout, right? Keep your shoulders away from your ears, eye gaze ears, just down into that stream of water. Beautiful. One more time for me. 
and then slowly come on in. If your knees allow it, child's pose. So open the knees, big toes touching, and take a wide grip on the bar. Try not to drop the head, keep the ears in line with your biceps, and then take the left hand and place it onto the right, hold it there for me. And then do the same on the other side. Oh, that feels good. And then bring yourself in for side two. So once again, alignment check. So the left foot is under the black bobble, or it's just in line with your springs. The right foot is up against the corresponding shoulder blocks. The knee is under the hip, square off. Neutral check, rib to hip, in breath. Exhale, glide away. So remember, it's the right leg moving, left leg still. We engage, we're thinking of stretching this muscle, the hip flexor, and engaging this muscle. So think antagonistic. If we engage one, the other one lengthens. That's what we want. So now same arm as leg that is moving is going up. So we're going to breathe out and inhale, return. Now I notice I'm not so good on this side. Make sure that that lower back, so a nice um, thing to do is place your, the hand into the small of your back just to double check that you're not jacking into the lumbar as you do that. Engaging that right glute, you'll squeeze the lemons and you'll feel it more. Because quite often I'll get a participant and say, I can't feel it. Not that they do not talk like that, that's how I talk. So <laughs> squeeze the butt cheek and you may feel it a lot more. So engage. 10 more seconds here, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Hands on your foot bar. Keep the knee in and slide back into hamstring. So once again, nice long spine, shoulders away from ears. Lift your tail feathers, stretching out that hamstring. Hold it there for four, three, two, and one. Slowly draw yourself in, and then stand yourself up. Give a little shake out. So we're going to move. We're going to turn around to face the back of the reformer. Now we're going to be doing some shoulder retractions. Once again, staying on your blue spring. Just be really mindful the way you get onto your reformer. It's an unstable surface as we get on. Modification, if you cannot kneel, place the box in a long box position and sit. So we use our hands on the shoulder blocks. I'm going to reach for my straps once again. I've got the handles, which I love to use. So if you can ever get those with handles, please do it. It's beautiful. So you've got your um, thighs up against the shoulder blocks. And you are going to gingerly just bring the arms into alignment. Just reset your shoulders for me. Check the neck is nice and long. Engage the glutes, but avoid tucking under and sinking. So we want a length through the spine. Think of the sternum shining forwards. That was very cheesy. Lift your sternum is what I'm trying to say. Keep the chin level to the reformer. Inhale. As you exhale, we're going to press away. And then inhale, return. So imagine you're scraping the floor with your hands as you press back. So there is a little bit of tricep work going on here. And we're feeling the resistance, the muscles working between your scapula. And there's that imaginary grape that you are popping. So this I call the anti-tech exercise. I always say that in class. I think it's so important that we work these muscles, especially if you are seated for a lot of the time during the day. This is a really important exercise. Do you notice I'm also working my balance and control here, having to balance in this position on a moving platform. To make it a little more intense, you do one arm at a time without rotating to the working side. So you've got to really square off there. Keep those glutes engaged. And breathe. Keep the neck nice and long. Let's go back to both arms. Are you ready? Together. And press. Try and avoid taking the arms too far forwards and just relaxing like that, okay? So you want to focus more on the pull, yeah? And on the return, don't let go too much. Checking in. Are you pressing evenly on both sides? Last one. And release that. Beautiful. So I'm going to place those straps down into the well. I'm going to turn around for a moment. Be mindful you're on a moving platform. So a carriage. You know the lingo. 
I've gone to a yellow or white spring. We're gonna go for a core exercise, the reverse jackrabbit. Well, that's the way I know from the school I was taught at. So I'm gonna bring my hands onto the rails. So the further up I take my hands, the harder the exercise, the closer, the easier, because the spring, I'm, I'm working against a spring. Think about your, your four-point kneel position in Pilates. So make sure that you come into a true four-point kneel position so your shoulders are over your wrists and your knees are under your hips and you're not tucking or arching your back. So find your neutral. You should be balancing a tennis ball on the small of your back. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the carriage into the wrists, which I've done, and then glide it away. Just exhale, pulling in and glide it away. I think I should have stayed on the blue. But I'm gonna do white and I'll show you progression from here. So wrists, I don't know if you've noticed the way I've have got my hands on the rails. So my thumbs and index fingers are at L shapes and my thumbs are not in the rails. So level two, tuck your toes under, transfer the weight onto your toes and now start to move. I'm gonna increase my range a little. You wanna make sure the upper back is broad so you're not bobbing for apples as you do that. The neck stays long and I exhale. Exhale. If you need to reset, reset. That's totally okay. Think of a ruler behind the back of your head. So we're working on shoulder stability, core strength here, which is wonderful. We need to do it. Just 200 more and I'll be happy. You've got 10 more seconds, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Slide yourself back and go into child's pose. Let's step off the vehicle to my side and stand yourself up. Give yourself a little shake out. OMG, I'm gonna open a window now. Hopefully it's not too noisy. Right, so we're gonna be doing a lunge next. So I'm going to go back to a blue spring. In another video, I'll be doing these on top of the reformer, but for today, I'm gonna to take it to the side of the reformer. Now, this all depends on how tall you are. Okay, so if you've got longer legs, you may need to move back a little, vice versa. So I'm gonna find a position that's comfortable for me, checking in, but I'm not gonna put my knee down on the carriage like we just did in the hip flexor stretch. So I'm gonna step back just a little bit more for me, yeah and straight away I'm having to balance on one leg. You've, you've seen those articles these days about we all need to balance on one leg, so this is a great exercise for that. So I'm gonna push the carriage away and I'm gonna bend my right knee and then I'm gonna bring myself back in. So I'm going to inhale and I'm going to exhale. So the leg on the carriage is there for the ride and it's all about the standing leg, yeah? Push, and then come back in. Now I'm gonna take the arms, and I'm gonna come up, go again. And just play with where you want it. I'm gonna try it a little further up, and let's see if that works for me. Yeah, that feels better for me. So just play around with where you want your foot. So we're working on standing ankle and hip stability on the right, keeping the hips square as you go down, finding the exclamation point at the bottom and at the top, okay, as you go. Excellent. Maybe you just wanna have your hands behind your back for today if you've got shoulder pathologies and that's okay too. We're gonna stay down here. We're gonna bring the carriage in. I'm gonna going to a scooter. So I'm in that 45 degree position, ribs, hip connection, and I'm just gonna be pressing that leg away. So that ankle leg is working big time now. I'm pressing my right knee out towards my baby toe, and this right hip glute medius is starting to say, hello, I am here. Good, keep it going. Let's add a bit of an athletic arm. Starting to burn, starting to burn. Yes. And then come on in. Ha, 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 ha. Take a seat. So that leg that you worked, cross it over 
and lean forward, so flex the ankle. Wow, did you feel that? Great. So we're going to move on. I'm going to challenge myself. Did I say this was a beginner's class? Well, work at the level you feel today, folks, because you're still going to work hard in a beginner's session. Even when I teach beginners, it can be a challenging session because you're working with technique, control, etc., all those principles. So coming on to the reformer. Now be safe here, guys, because I'm going to step up onto the platform. I might go out of, out of shot. I'm hoping not. Um, so we're going to step onto the non-moving part, which is your platform, not the carriage. So I'm going to step up, and then I'm going to step <laughs> right close to the window. Then I'm going to step onto a moving carriage gingerly. Okay. Now I'm quite short, so I'm a little closer to the springs. If you're taller, you need to be back a little. And I've got the weight shoulder to wrist here. So wrist issues, you may need to have mats just to give you a little bit more to offload the wrist. So inner thighs connected, lifting up. We're going into the pike exercise. So scoop the abs and we're going to glide the carriage out, keeping the shoulders over the wrists, squeeze the glutes, and then come back up, lifting the hips up. Now I haven't done the full pike yet. I'm just, demonst uh, just going through this nice and slowly. So you could be on a blue spring right now. That gives you a little bit more support. You want to avoid your shoulders leaving the foot bar. And you want to avoid the hyperextension in your back as well. So now I'm going to add the head tuck in on the next one. I'm going to exhale. And you don't want to hit the bumper. And you want to go back out. So you're going to breathe out. Tuck your head in. Get your lower abs to work. You're working shoulder stability as well, bone loading the wrists and shoulders. We need that core stability, pelvic floor sucking up and in. Now stay out in that plank position and raise the right knee up. Keep the carriage still, then the left. Keeping the shoulders over the wrists at all times, please. Keeping the neck long. And then lift back up into pike. Bring the carriage home gently, lower down, step onto your platform to exit to the other side and come down. Change back to a blue spring. Prepare for lunges, side two. So I'm going to have my foot a little closer forwards because I learned my lesson on that side, thinking you need to be back a little. Just depends on your springage and the, the height you are right now. So you are going to square off once again. Find your position, organize pelvis, shoulders low, and we're going to take an in-breath as we glide out. So we bend the left knee, but you keep the left leg long, so it's just there for the ride, and then you come back up. And take note of your foot right now. Are you rolling in? That should be a no. You want to make sure that you're not squishing that imaginary ant under the arch of your foot. So you find that exclamation point at the base. And then when you come back up, beautiful. So if you want to, you can add arms. And I'm doing the breathing wrong, so it's inhale, lower, exhale, come up. To be honest, folks, just breathe. So you don't want to get bogged down with your breathing. Just breathe as you move. So that left leg starting to feel the burn now. Left glute, trying not to roll in. We're gonna do one more here, and then stay in. Hinge forwards, straight line from crown to tail, neutral. So I'm going to say, put one hand on your low back, one hand on your belly on this side. Keep the neck long, shoulders low. Add the arm. Beautiful. So working on that balance on your left side now, working your glute medius. Stay with me, folks. Oh, lucky I had a wall there. That was cheating. Rude. <laughs> Keep it going. If this didn't record, I will cry. 
10 more seconds. Four, three, two, one, stand up. And I'm gonna turn my back away from you for a moment and stretch my glute on that side. So it's the standing leg, which is my left that I'm stretching out right now. Beautiful, excellent, great. So, so you can stay on a blue spring. So if you've got a bit of low back pain today, I'm gonna to say stay on a blue spring. If you've got a platform extender, you may wanna place that on top of your reformer now. I'm gonna go back to a yellow or a light spring. I'm gonna put my foot bar down. Please fit. It does. What do you think of my studio? I'm so excited to be able to teach online here. Right, so I'm on a very light spring. We're gonna go for some front plank work. So if you have, if you wanna do the intermediate option, you're gonna kneel on your platform, okay? And you're gonna have your forearms on the um, carriage. If you're with me, we're gonna kneel and have our forearms on the carriage. You're gonna cup your hands around the posts or the shoulder blocks, and you're gonna tuck your toes on your platform. I've got quite a narrow platform here. If anyone out there knows of platform extenders for this reformer, can you please message me? I'd be so grateful. And this is in the UK. <laughs> right, so lift the knees up. So remember guys, my guys on the knees here, we're gonna try out our plank position. So you're gonna slide yourself out, but remember abs first, and then slide out to plank, checking in. Elbows are underneath your shoulders. Maybe you need to lift your pelvis a little, see how you feel, and then bend those knees back in and push away. So those of you that are doing the higher option with me, stick with this. Those of you on your knees, you're sliding out. Make sure you're not arching in your lower back. Engage the gluteals. Imagine there was 5P between your butt cheeks. Keep the neck nice and long. Squeeze under the armpits. Keep it going. Can we do a few like the pike that we just did on the foot bar? I like this. It's a bit like a dolphin push-up. So you're always bringing the hips back up to this guy. Did we say beginner? <laughs> this may have turned into an intermediate session. But anyway, you know, you work with what you want today. You could be resting right now, or you're with me. Give me 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stinger, rest if you need to. Press away, press away, come on. Neck is long, oh, core galore, I love this. You can't really mimic this unless you use gliders on the floor, but even so, this is what I love about reformer core work. And then knees to the carriage come back. And so, what was I gonna say, survive? Relax. <laughs> so stand yourself up. I'm gonna open another window. I know, I'm so dramatic today, aren't I, teacher? Dramatic. <laughs> Right, we're gonna bring the football back up to the highest position. I want you to change to one red, one blue, one white spring, yellow spring, or use what you use for feet in straps, the magic term here, or words, should I say. So I'm gonna collect my straps and place them onto my posts. If you have a bed that has these posts that you can do so, and then I'm gonna bring myself onto my back and step into the straps. This, when I first teach reformer to people and they're like, oh my goodness, how do I get into these straps? So your feet are on your football, hold the straps in your hands, push away, mind the silverware on your face, put the right foot in, now this is important, push, push forwards. Now notice you can just step the other foot in and then, Push away. Yeah, organize yourself. Check your neutral spine, no tucking or arching. Rib to hip, so start off with fingertips on the margin of your ribs and uh, the middle fingers on the iliac crest, the sticky out of it. I'm gonna lift my headrest up half because I've just got tight shoulders and back. So we're gonna lift up and we're gonna lower down. So I'm going to inhale, and then I'm gonna exhale. Now what's happening in the pelvis? 
We do not want to tuck the tail under when we lift up and then as we go down or we'll arch the back. Imagery time. So there is a rope under your lower back. I should not be able to pull it out. Okay? But there's a little baby ladybird, <laughs> baby ladybird, underneath your lower back. Do not squish it. Okay? Breathing out as you lower, inhale, release. So we're working on pelvic stability, but of core strength here, hamstring flexibility in a way, and hip mobility, if I've not said that already. Now we're going to press down to about the height of your football circle round and then bring it back in, push down. Now for a hypermobile person, they would most probably, I say they, hypermobile people, would be really snapping into their knees. So you need to be mindful and maybe go for a smaller circle than what I'm doing right now because it would be pretty easy to see to just go ah, and let your bum come off. We don't want that, so go nice and decrease your range is what I'm trying to say. Be more specific, Adrian. Don't waffle. I can hear my trainer telling me that. Don't waffle, because I'm a talker, if you've noticed. And we're breathing out. Push down. Inhale, return. Push down. That's it. Let's change direction. Go the opposite way. Circle round and down. Inner thighs connect and then come back up. If you want to be more specific in parallel, then turn out. Inner thighs connect and then come back up. Keep your bottom on the carriage. Find your range. I hope you've enjoyed this today. I have. It's quite nice. Having a reform at home, OMG. Now we're going to join the circle at the top and the bottom. So circle round and up. And round and down. Once again, check that you're not flaring through those ribs. I heard this tip the other day was, try to hide the ribs within your t-shirt. I always say I've got big ribs. <laughs> At dance college, the teacher would say, put your ribs away. Breathing. This is normally the participants' favorite bit of the session. Can we do feet and straps? This is like your reward for all the nasty things the teacher got you to do. It's saying nasty, it's not nasty stuff, it's lovely stuff, good for the body, your spine will thank you. And that being said, let's finish the last one. Bring the knees to table, okay? This is definitely a bit tighter than that one, so always check your ropes. Now bring the heels together, toes apart, and your knees are about the distance of your shoulder blocks. Yeah. So my hypermobiles, you won't go frog press. You will just stay parallel for me, please. So I've got a nice New York pizza slice. And I've got pressure through the heels. Neutral spine check. Abdominals are naturally engaged. Ribs are soft. And let's push away. And come back in. What you may get is this. See what I did there? I just relaxed all the way in. So you want to resist both ways. All these basic moves that we have done together today are actually super tough if you do them correctly. So you could go to your beginner's class and still get a really great workout. And also it's a nice way to retune re in with your technique. Because when you start doing the more advanced exercises and the more fancy Instagram stuff, you know, you need to Maybe reel it back a little. Reel it back, oh. Gosh. So my inner thighs are working. I'm squeezing. I'm trying to keep those ribs in. I know a lot of people are gonna comment on my rib cage. Sorry, everyone. Maybe I should remove them. <laughs> no, I won't have this problem. <laughs> We're gonna do one more. And then what I'd like you to do is take the left foot out of the your left foot out of the strap and pop the strap back on, on the post. And I'm stretching out my right hamstring. Now let's do a little experiment here, team. If you flatten your back to the carriage, you won't feel the stretch as much. Now go into neutral 
and you'll feel it more, yay or nay. And I'm just holding it there for a moment. Now I'm gonna take it across the midline. So my sciatica people, anyone who's got any type of nerve root pain, you may need to stay here. Or if it doesn't feel good, hug your knees to your chest. So I'm gonna take the leg across the midline and today that's the maximum I can go because this is a pretty tight, um, if I do that, ah, there we go. So your, your football leg is a controller really and it helps. If you bend your knee, see the pulley system pulls your leg. So I'm gonna take it across the midline. And let's do a little bit of a flex and a point. So be careful you're not winding up that nerve when you do that, folks. So be mindful. Maybe you just want to hold it. And then bring the leg back in. I'm going to take my foot out that foot strap. And I'm going to place it onto my post. And I'm, collect, I'm going to collect the second one. Sorry about the noise. And step into it. So the strap is closer to the heel than the toes. And I'm going to find the position. Oh my goodness, this strap is a lot tighter. <laughs> so I'm going to go into the ball of my foot there. Okay, so normally I'd be on my heel. Keeping your hips as level as possible, neutral. Feel the stretch in the back of your thigh and take a nice deep inhale, exhale. Breathing. Now I'm going to take it across the midline. Yes, the, the left pelvis comes off the carriage a little. And maybe you want to point and flex. A little bit of neural flossing here. Let's just double check our time. Coming back through the center, take your foot out that foot strap. And then just... Hopefully my mic was on, I'll cry if this didn't work. So shoulders low, I know I'm a bit, I'm a bit over the top, or as some people say, extra. And just checking in. So I've put my headrest down. Deep breaths, now push away. Whew, that was noisy. And you're on the toe mounds, the ball of the foot, and just do some foot pedals again. And notice how much easier that is, oh my goodness. But still keeping your principles here. Remember, hips are level, ribs are soft, working through both feet. Choreo time. And then bring yourself in. Cross the right ankle over the left thigh. Level one, stay down here. So hip replacements. You may find you don't want to do this today. So you're just going to do a gentle hip roll here. Everyone else, level one, level two, hamstring, level three, shin. Now this is what I love about reforming. You've got a headrest that you can lift. So elevating the skull helps because you see people doing that. So just lift your headrest. And maybe you want to move from side to side. Pop that headrest down, headrest foot down, and you're gonna cross the leg all the way over. And you're gonna move from side to side. Oh, I got a click there. I've not uncrossed. Yeah. Is this on? Yeah, it is. And let's change. There's no editing here, folks. This is all just me. When you're ready, you can stay down, you can push or you can lift, come into that position. Oh, I'm sweaty today, too much info. It's a bit close, isn't it? A little bit close. <laughs> and then put your foot down, cross it all the way over, and then go from side to side. So strong rotational movements, I'm thinking about osteopenia, osteoporosis, you want to avoid that. You want to go smaller than what I'm doing. And then we're going to uncross and roll out the bed safely. And then just sitting at the front third of your reformer, up nice and tall, hold it there for a moment, and then take your hand here and the hand there. So as I said, osteoporosis, I want you to stay here and do a very small rotational movement. Everyone else, you're gonna cross that foot. Let's sit back a bit more so the foot is on your carriage. 
and then you're going to wrap that left arm around and twist. Think of lifting up before you rotate so we don't have a saggy rotational position. You want to sit up tall. Lengthen before you rotate. Always remember that. And then switch other side. So I'm going to do this. Sit up tall. Maybe this is you today. Wrap, kickstand, lengthen, rotate, neck is long, breathe. Come back to me. Without using your hands, stand up. That's important. So we're gonna have our feet about hip width apart. Have a look down, make sure those feet are facing forwards. And let's take an in breath. And let's take an exhalation. Let's reach that arm up, side bend, change. Lift up, side bend, bring it down. Bend your knees. And without moving your skull, just rotate from your ribs. So we don't do that. I'm smiling at you right now. Are you smiling at me or did you absolutely hate that? <laughs> Come back to the center, standing nice and tall. Take an inhale and take an exhale. Shake out the arms and legs. Give yourself a little rotation if allowed. And then give yourselves a hand, guys. Thank you so much for joining my first reformer session in this brand new studio at home that I have. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Take care, everyone. My name's Adrian, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.